you have a job in the private economy today, you got a 401k or an IRA. But your city government, your state government, is still promising people traditional pensions. They're saying, don't worry, we budget for these things, we're preparing for them. But the amounts of money they're setting aside are far short of adequate. The budgeting and accounting measures that they're using, standards that they're using, are completely flawed. And the true magnitude of the problem is three to four times worse, three and a half trillion dollars approximately. I remember several years back when I spent a few days in Detroit, inner city, downtown Detroit, and came away thinking it was just this side of a bombed out Beirut of many years past, a crushing mess of debt, decaying houses and businesses, wondering aloud to a friend at the time, when the city was going to be completely broken after fess up, their elected officials screwed up and there was no way out. He never answered. His frown and silence was all the answers I needed. Detroit fired for bankruptcy July of 2013. They emerged from that black hole in late 2014. But Detroit's far from in the clear, and what happened to them is coming to more major American cities. The password is pension. Welcome back to Veteran of Wall Street, noted economist, author, and host of The Steve Beeman Show, coming soon to WIND AM 560 Chicago, Steve Beeman, along with the syndicated columnist, noted economist, professor of business at the University of Maryland, Peter Morisi. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. We got all the economy work in here. Steve, to you first. According to Financial Times, the U.S. public pension system, a 3.4 trillion dollar funding hole at this point and this is something that couldn't have just snuck up on people steve how did this get so bad well it's been going on for so long but let me touch on the poster child for all this and that's the state of illinois where we have something on the order of 111 billion dollars of pension obligations and nowhere near the ability to pay it but wrote it into our constitution so the government cannot cut back pension benefits this is ludicrous. It's going to take the state of Illinois down, and we're not alone. California is in the same boat and many others. So this is, in fact, a bubble that's going to burst in an ugly way for millions of people. It's an incredible amount of money here. Peter, Congressman Devin Nunez, who introduced a bill to revise how pension plans report the figures, commented on this by saying very clear that it's been clear for years that many cities and states critically underfunding their pension programs, hiding the fiscal holes with accounting tricks, and when these funds go insolvent, they will create problems so disastrous that the fund officials assume the feds will have to bail them out. All right, Peter, three and a half trillion dollars. How do you get out of it now? Well, the only real answer is to raise the retirement age for current employees so that they retire later or extend the number of years before they get benefits and to cut the benefits. Uh, it's simply the cities and states have been paying these employees 125% of what they take in or some similar number, but they haven't been doing it strictly with dollars. They've also been doing it with IOUs under the assumption their economies would continue growing and bail them out. But with 2% economic growth, what you're basically seeing is an exaggerated version of what the social security system is, an actuarial nightmare. Now, a judge can say that the city of Detroit, you know, can't cut pension benefits. A judge can say that about the city of Chicago. But at the end of the day, if Illinois can't pay, Illinois can't pay. And sooner or later, these systems have to go bust. The question is, do they destroy their cities and states and state universities and whatever first? The answer is, look at Detroit, likely. Steve, looking at this instance and looking at Detroit and looking at San Bernardino as well, is there any doubt whatsoever that there's nothing that can be done at this point? Other cities are going to go bankrupt. It's going to happen. Major cities, you can try. We can talk about it all we want. But three and a half trillion dollars, you can't hide it and stop it. The way, Ed, to fix it, if it can be fixed, is to regenerate economic growth in the 35 4% rate. It doesn't look like we're going to do that anytime soon. The, the concern here, at least if you look at Illinois and how bad it is, is it can change the nature of our republic. When the federal government has to come in and take over the state's finances, again, a city is a very different thing than a state. A state is an independent, autonomous unit. It can't go bankrupt, but it can have severe financial trouble, and that's what Illinois and others are going to have. All right. Now, whoever becomes president is going to have to try and fix all this. Peter, let me come to you. Your latest column on Newsmax.com, what non or not Trump Republicans must embrace to win in November. Look, Peter, there's a lot of people out here saying that it's very simple, that they just got to get better with women. Is it that simple? Well, they do need to do better with women, and they need to uncover the fact that Hillary Clinton is cynically abusing the issue. Uh, young women don't face discrimination in the workplace. That's just a lot of nonsense and stuff cooked up by academics who are trying to get grants from the Ford Foundation and such. Uh, but the reality is, is that women believe it. 
And so they need to come up with a counter proposal. And I would suggest we just require, as opposed to having to say the Paycheck Fairness Act like California does, that we require employers to publish what they pay people. Put it all in the public domain. So if there is wage discrimination, women will be able to confront their bosses and sue them. I think you'll find that it's going to be very difficult for women to justify Hillary Clinton's claims once we have that transparency. I got about a minute left here. Let me come to you, Steve. One last shot here on business. Yahoo sits out there right now. The Daily Mail is talking about purchasing them. Isn't this just a massive failure of a company that had a beautiful core business, was making money, was trying to move ahead, but then they tried to be media everything and they have just torched it. This is a huge disaster. I would say you're right, but I also think it, as much as a disaster, it's the nature of the beast. I think when Yahoo came in, they didn't have a strong enough crystal ball to see where technology would go. And I think that as we entered a new era of news and commentary and entertainment, they thought they could cover all the bases, and in fact, they couldn't. So, yeah, it looks like they're going to have to be split up and parsed out and done away with it as we know them today. Tend to think that the people are going to be in charge, or at least the people in charge right now, Steve, they better be looking for jobs. <laughs> I think some of them better. I think the shareholders and board are going to be pretty upset. I want to remind everybody once again, Peter Morisi's column is at Newsmax.com. It is again entitled, What Not Trump Republicans Must Embrace to Win in November. There's a lot of stuff in here about education, college grads, so much more. And it is something that will make you think, no doubt about it. Peter Morisi, Steve Beeman, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you next week. Losing and leading at the same time. It is a lesson that certain notable politicians could take from a Sunday in Augusta because it's more than about golf, what happened on those greens. That's next in Telling It Like It Is.